Welcome back for another recommended daily activity video. Again, we're going to focus on total body today. We've got our whole body warm up routine or movement improvement routine, something to kick your day off or finish your day up or break your day up in the middle and get your body moving. So some of my favorite exercises, one of these uh, that we're starting with today is a little bit more difficult. This is the windmill stretch. So as always with this series, you're usually coming off of the desk or you're um, starting out of the bed or, or you're pretty tight and stiff. Ease into each exercise. Maybe use multiple rounds to improve your challenge a little bit. Um, just take it easy at the beginning. We'll have 45 seconds of the windmill stretch. The windmill stretch is a big staggered stance and you can do um, your eight point con contact staggered stance, meaning that back heel uh, toes and front heel toes are all connected or you could go to a six point. I'll let you choose based off of how you're feeling on your balance today. And you're essentially going to rotate into a bend or rotate into a hinge. So you're gonna let this hand slide down your thigh and the other hand reach to the sky. And so from this position, maybe this is all you need to find a stretch through your back hip and low back, as well as your inner groin. Riza may be able to get a little lower, but lower is harder for her balance. She definitely can get lower, check that out. And then she'll come back up to the sky. And let's do one more, take it down and we'll hold it this time. So this is about a 45 second round here. That first repetition is kind of get the feel for it. Second repetition, we heard a little crack and pop. That's a normal thing as long as it doesn't come with pain. Right, so just maintaining that big stretch, keeping her breathing pattern at a steady one. There's a lot of reaction time and instability going on in this exercise. So her neuromotor system is getting challenged. She's trying to maintain her head flat. Great job. Maybe rotate the palm in different directions. Just changing the shoulder angle may feel a little bit different and give you a little bit different variety in this stretch. Still looking for that hip and groin mobility. Yeah, rotate it at a different angle one more time. Three, two, one, and rest. Not an easy exercise. She made that look easy. Switch sides. Same thing on side B. Maybe, maybe this will be her cha more challenging side. We'll see the thigh, or the hand slide down the thigh. The other hand rotates with the body, shoulders up toward the ceiling. I'm gonna pull this up a little bit higher. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Good. So from this angle, you can see she's got a pretty straight leg here. You could soften that knee if that caused you any kind of pain through your thighs and hips here. But that front leg being straight gives it a little bit more of a, a pop back in that hip and a little bit more of a straight hamstring stretch. Both of those would be totally acceptable. We forgot to have you come up. Go ahead and stand up in this one. We'll give you a break and let's do it again. Maybe soften that knee in the front side and show them how to go into that, that hinge. Probably feels quite a bit different for Risa because that first version was a really tight, restricted version. This one's a little bit more free because she's unlocked that kinetic chain there. Good job. We'll hold it for another five, four. Try to keep the head right about there. Three two, one, and you saw she was using the palm angle to change the shoulder stretch a little bit. Good job. Moving into your hacky sack. This is uh, an exercise that we've used in other series of our, um, of our YouTube uh, videos for dynamic movement or for balance as well. The hacky sack is a total body coordination exercise. It also includes a lot of mobility and strength stability in muscle groups that we don't use very often throughout the day in that pattern. So Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and begin with the hacky sack. Mm -hmm. You don't have to touch your heel if your mobility is restricted and you're tight in your hips. You may not be able to get that heel to your hand. Um, most importantly, is just getting those cross body patterns moving, and that may come with quite a coordination challenge. So as Risa slowly moves into this, you know every rep is very deliberate. And as she gets the hang of it, gets the swing of it, she may pick up her rhythm and be able to move more in a, a, like a march in place type of manner where it's constant, one foot after the next, a lot of movement. What we're looking for here is, yes, dynamic balance and control and stability, a little bit of mobility, but really we're hoping to get a, a little bit of a respiratory and heart rate response as well. Shoulders, I guess they're optional, but it's a total body day. 
you want to try to get a little bit more work, and if she wanted to get even more work, maybe take them up into a Y. Y position overhead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could just switch that a little bit more to make your body work. We're just here for another five seconds. Three, two, one. Great job. This next one's another pretty big challenge, but you can modify it to your own needs. It's a split squat hold, and we're going to go through TYs, or what I call thank yous. So she's gonna go down into your split squat. Split squat for, for you may just look like a big staggered stance, stepping back and just bracing and, and holding. For some of us, if we're stronger, we may drop into it a little bit, maintaining good positioning and alignment. And then if you're really advanced in your mobility and strength, you may take it all the way down. All right, so go ahead and choose your version. Maybe a bit of a moderate version there. Okay, the hands come up from a T to a Y, and then back to the T. And we're going to go 30 seconds of those shoulder motions. Now the whole time her lower body is working on static strength. So this is like isometric uh, wall sits maybe. Um, she's loaded into this back thigh. She's sucking and tucking through her pelvis. She's got her front foot really hyperactive, which is activating all these uh, kinetic chain neurons all the way up through her hips uh, and even core. Five seconds more. Shoulders are probably starting to burn even after the windmill and the hanky sack, those were active. Go ahead and switch sides. Now she'll step up, drop back in the opposite side. Try to maintain that um, same depth best you can. Knee issues will probably decide this more than anything. Begin on the TYs. Great job. So that TY angle right here is going to start to create Compensation, if you're really tight through your shoulders, you got to make sure that you keep the suck and tuck and don't let your sternum jut out as your body gets more tired through the shoulders. The body, it, it tends to find ways to make it easier on you. Almost there. I know. She's looking at me. She's wondering, how long am I going to be here? It's tough. You fight through that little bit of a challenge and you can rest good. Fight through that little bit of a challenge and you'll feel much better afterwards. It's amazing what a little physical challenge can do for your body and your mind. Our total body mobility exercise is going to be the lateral line lean and reach. What we're going to do here is going to find, uh, it's going to be to find a space on the wall that we can lean into with our forearm. Kind of like a side plank, but just a really light lean. Uh, you do want to take that lean, go ahead and you can show them from, uh, yeah, that's fine. Or you can face me if you wanted to see here first, doesn't matter. Um, I'll have her show you that you're going to have just a light lateral lean into the wall, elbows right about shoulder height, bracing yourself there. She's going to cross her outside leg over and just prop it against her inside leg. So it's passively sitting there nice and soft, not putting any weight on that outside leg. So all, pretty much all your weight is shifted into that inside leg. From here, she's gonna wave at the neighbor. That's in that waving position here. She'll start small and work into this. Let's begin about 45 seconds of reaching overhead, kind of up toward the corner of the ceiling and the wall, holding there. Maybe load back down and give yourself a little bit uh, reset down and give yourself another reach just to kind of feel it out and push your hips away from the wall as you reach now. So those hips should come in as you're coming down and out as you're going back up. Now she's going to hold this stretch, reach more toward the ceiling. There you go. And as you're holding that stretch for another 15 minutes or 15 seconds or so, not quite 15 minutes, maybe you can lean a little bit forward. You can add a little variety to this stretch. It should be coming all the way through your rib cage to your hips, to your uh, lower back and on your shoulder. Everything's kind of connected. But if you add a little variety in and out in that stretch, you can add, find different, slightly different angles to it. Go ahead and switch sides. the foot over, prop it against it, yep, wave at the neighbor, uh-huh, starting there, and you're going to go into it just lightly, hold for a moment, see how this side feels. Sometimes side to side, you're going to feel things slightly different, and so you got to ease into it, go ahead and load down, the hips come back center, and then one last time to stay there and hold and brace, we're going to get that hand nice and straight, try to get it up to the ceiling. 
finding a big shoulder underarm reach but or stretch but you also with that overhead reach get a shoulder blade stretch maybe up even through the neck coming down to the rib cage down to the soft side of the belly into the hip bone and even down into your um, your other hip bone ball and socket of the hip go ahead and add a little variety stay in it and you can have just the lightest little turns there uh, it takes it into a slightly different angle and you can rest Okay, to finish up today, we're going to go into a single leg stance with a unilateral load. So Rice is going to grab a resistance band. You could easily pick up a dumbbell or maybe a, a bag of books or a bag of groceries or something. She's going to use that resistance band to stand on and she's going to take it into her opposite hand uh, and she's going to kind of choke down on it to get some good resistance, some pretty solid resistance. You can probably give it another tug there. Yeah, you want to have a good load of resistance, and then she's going to come into her single leg stance. Let's begin. Pick up that left leg and hold just the band in your left hand. Let's pick up your left leg and hold. There we go. That's the single leg stance with unilateral load. Just bracing and breathing creates a different line of tension and a different line of challenge for the balance and stability. I'm moving around her, which also creates a new element of challenge. She's probably wishing I would just stay put. Almost there. Keep working at it for five, four, three, two, one. Very good. Same thing, opposite side, so she'll stand on that band in the left leg this time. We'll see if she chose her strong side first. Most people will use their more dominant foot first to start with. I always try to challenge folks to use their off leg first. Let's begin and hold. Breathe and brace. When you're in your single leg stance, remember to maintain that knee soft. That soft knee creates active soft tissues that can react and respond. We don't want rigid joints. We're also looking to make sure in reality that things stay rather symmetrical, rather uh, centered over that foot. Obviously, she's had to shift her hips a little bit, but we want pretty well square position, and we're not letting that shoulder get pulled down across. Good job, you're doing that. Um, and, and in that sense, this becomes a total body from kinetic chain, posterior chain, to posture, to neuromotor demand, rest.